Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, explodingly popular podcast. I don't know if that's how you say it or not, but it's, it's going big, going fast as his. And you can join him at Dr. John Deloney. You can call into his show. I'll go ahead and tell you what that is if you want to call in. If you can't get in here today, he's here to help you with your life, your money, uh, boundaries, relationships, anxiety, whatever it is you're dealing with. And we'll talk about your money, too, which is kind of all the same thing, really. But uh, his number, if you want to jump in on the doc, on the Dr. John Deloney show, is you can just send him an email at askjohn at ramseysolutions.com. Or voicemail, and we'll make you into a caller at 844-693-3291. The phone number here, if you want to talk about your life today, as Dr. John and I are with you, is 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say it's worth considerably less than you paid for it. All right, Jeremy is with us in Sacramento. Hey, Jeremy, how can we help today? How are you doing? Thanks for having me on, gentlemen. Sure. Um, to me, me and my wife uh, actually started following you at uh, the end of February this year, so just a little over a month ago. Wow. And um, kind of what got me going is when I did my taxes and realized that we made decent money but had no money to uh, show for it at the end. And when uh, That's a different like, level of disgust, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Where'd it go? Um, yeah. So... Uh, Ended up uh, purchasing your program, doing all the on. Uh, I fell in love with it. Showed my wife; she fell in love with it because we had both kind of felt the same way for a little bit. After adding up all of our debt snowballs, we were about uh, ninety-seven thousand dollars in debt. Wow! Um, <laughs> uh, one of which was my eight hundred dollar a month truck payment. And so, uh, Whoa! So uh, within the first two weeks, I was able to sell my truck and uh, only ended up eating about three hundred dollars. Wow. So we we're super blessed in that. Um, and so now we've been doing the. How much did the truck for, sell for? Uh, 46.5. Oh, so half and of I, your I, debt was pickup. And I'd, yes. And so I had purchased it for about 50 uh, yeah. about two years before. You did okay. Um, yeah. And so we've been hitting it this month and um, we're down to about 29,000 left um, that we're going to be paying off. And so uh, we're super grateful for you guys to kind of just lead us in the right direction. Man, you're on fire. Um, I love it. My question is, um, we're still hopefully by the end of July, we'll be completely out of debt. And so approximately October, we should have our three months um, saved uh -huh. um, for retirement. I work for a company where they take out uh, for pension. We have to contribute nine and a half percent that they pull out and, you know, I'll get it when I retire. Uh -huh. But for the 15 percent, um, when I go to retire, to for investing uh -huh. how would i contribute that because i because uh, they don't match or anything so i'll right. be pulling it probably into my 401k roth well here's my um, theory on it okay okay and yes, then sir. you can you can decide what you want to do but here's how i came up with the answer and then i'll give you the answer the the pension what it's invested in is number one not in your control so the rates Correct. of return that you make versus you can select a mutual fund in a 401k. And so if you don't like this one, you can get another one. And so you have a sense of control. Uh, and if you got a bad investment, you can move it around with a pension. It just is what it is. You're stuck with it. Problem number one. Problem number two with a pension is it's not in your name. If you have a 401k and your company goes broke, the 401k is in your name. It's not an asset of the company. You get all your money. If your pension is, if your company goes broke and you have a pension, it is an asset on their books and you may get zero. That's a possibility Correct. if they went broke. Okay. So point being of both of these things is you're not in control of your destiny, but it is your money, nine and a half percent that you're putting in mandatory every month. And so I want to count some of it towards the 15%, but because of those two problems, I'm going to count only about half of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's just call it 5%. And so now you need to do 10% otherwise. 
and that, okay. there, that because I want you to have substantial money that is in your control, and that ten percent will still get you there. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. That's what I was just trying to look for a number. I wasn't sure if it was we were up as high as like thirteen or fourteen to balance the difference. But yeah, I there, wanted there's to no make magic. Sure. There's no magic. Okay. I, I just okay. made that up. Okay. Okay. Uh, years ago, I made it up, but I mean, it, but the reasoning behind it is I'm going to count it at about 50% because it's got these two major problems where you're not in control and th- you could lose it, uh, where with your 401k, you're in control and you don't lose it in the event the company goes belly up. So we give it some weight, but not, not a hundred cent on the dollar weight. Do companies have an exigency, an, a financial exis- exigency, is that the right word? They have the ability to, to roll that pension out of where it sits and pay their bills with it if, no, they, if, no, they, got, no. if they got too bad? No. It's, okay. it's held. And they're highly regulated in how you Even can, a pension plan yeah, is? Yeah. Okay. How, and in how you can invest it, which is also actually one of the problems because they can't invest it as well because it's considered too aggressive as you would with mutual funds. Okay. And so the returns are usually in the 6 to 7% range rather than in the 10 to 12% range. Okay. And so you're not making as much on your money either, but uh, they don't have access to it to, you know, to pay payroll Friday or something like that. But it is an it is an asset on the books. Their books not yours. Mm-hmm. And so because you don't have this ownership position, you know, the kind of the old almost legendary story in a movie or something like the mine went broke and Papa lost his pension. Right. You know, well, that's exactly what happened. Can they can they borrow money against that since nope. it's an asset? No. Nope. So it's just a floating. It's, it's just, just a weight. thing over there. It's, it's, a, it's okay. a bookkeeping entry. But the problem is the ownership and the regulation. Okay. You, you know, it's overregulated. So they're they're they have to dumb down what they're doing. Right. And uh, because to keep them from. Being stupid with Being it. Being stupid with it and screwing you up, right, since you don't have control of it. But the unintended consequence is, is it's this watered-down rates of return. Okay. Uh, and then – I didn't know companies had to hold it as an asset. It's not – well, I mean, it's not an asset that's usable. Which to, makes to, it to your, almost worse, point. right? It's just, yeah. it's just like a balloon. To your that, point. And, but the problem still that. in lies that, that, you know, the mine went broke and Papa lost his pensions thing still is a real thing, mm-hmm. you know, and some of the pensions have uh, good insurance on them and all kinds of, there's all kinds of ways that you're probably not going to lose your money. Mm-hmm. But I mean, unions, they, they mishandle them sometimes. The unions are notorious for that. Or municipalities go bankrupt. And yeah. Those... I mean, you've seen Detroit mm-hmm. and Birmingham and some of the other areas. I mean, they've had real issues and um, even some of these states are very poorly run. Well, especially if they're bonded out, that man, and the, yeah. the interest rates can, man, that's they're, they're jammed up on their dadgum, you know, the, the way they run business sucks. Yeah. Uh, the business aspect of running the state, the governing of the state is done poorly. So you just have to, you know, you don't, you can't automatically assume it's gold. Mm-hmm. It's not gold, but it's probably okay. I'm not trying to be melodramatic, but, but I just don't count it at a hundred cents when we're doing the calculation. Cause I really just like this whole thing of, if I know I am responsible for my turnout of my destiny, mm-hmm then that is one of the keys for it to turn out well. (laughs) Because you got to be invested in If you're waiting on someone else to do this for you, whether it's the government, your company, your pension, and somehow you can relinquish the responsibility for your future to someone else, that's the moment you got screwed. Mm -hmm. When you gave up the belief that you are responsible for your future. Mm -hmm. You have to get up, leave the cave, kill something and drag it home, hustle, grind, get your butt on fire, get some stuff happening. You control your destiny. Hey folks, I got a great option to help you pay for your education. The Army National Guard. The Army National Guard believes you are the next greatest generation because you have proven that even in adversity, that you have what it takes to succeed. That's why they offer benefits like tuition assistance, career training, and a paycheck to help you avoid debt. No matter what your goals are, the Army National Guard can help you get there. Visit nationalguard.com to find out more. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey 
personality is my co-host today. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Katrina is in Detroit. Hi, Katrina. How can we help? Hey, super nervous to talk to you guys. Um, My question is, I recently just got engaged, and I would like to start planning for our wedding. But the problem is, is I'm a hot mess and in debt. So I want to be responsible while still trying to pay off debt and not get further into debt, but also still plan a good wedding. Good for you. So any tips or advice for trying to get a good budget number and how to move forward, as well as talking to my now fiance of how we want to tackle debt after we get married. Okay. What do you make a year? Around 70. What does he make a year? Around 30. Okay. And uh, how much hot mess debt have you got? Uh, 105. And that's in what? Uh, a little bit of everything. Hospital, credit cards. Student What's loans. the big one? Student loan? Student loans. How much? Yep. 78. 78. How much you owe on the car? Mm-hmm. No car. No car. Okay. Cre- so credit card, student loans, and other miscellaneous crap is the other uh, 20 some odd thousand dollars. Yep. Okay. Uh, how old are you? 27. I had to think about it. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm sorry. Say say that again. You're how old? 27. 27. Okay. 27. Right. Okay. What do I you do for a living? Research. Hmm? Research. You researcher? Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. So what do you think the budget ought to be for the wedding? You're paying for 100% of it, right? Correct. Okay. The two of you. I, Mom and dad aren't helping. Yes. Correct. Okay. I was thinking around 20 but as soon as I start thinking towards 20, I'm like, that's a student loan I could pay off. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to get a firm, good number that I can just like, this is what we're planning. We're just going to sink fun, sunk on it, and this is what it is. Okay. And then just move forward from there. All right. The average wedding in America last year was 28000 That means that a considerable number of people spent more than that, and a considerable number of mm-hmm. people spent a lot less than that. The average household okay. income in America last year was right around 60000 So the typical family is spending a maximum or an average of half of their annual income on a wedding. But they don't have $105,000 worth of debt hanging over their head either necessarily. And some of those mom and dad are paying for it. So we have to okay. factor all of that stuff in. But that's just some numbers to keep into consideration. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of young people in my building here. Uh, A lot of them getting married every year uh, while they're trying to get out of debt. So they face the exact same equation you have. And I have personally attended many, many, many wonderful weddings in the $10,000 and under range. Okay. Perfect. So I'm Mm -hmm. making this up. I'm just throwing out some numbers there. So I threw out 28. I threw out 10. You threw out 20. You make right. you got a household income when you're married of a hundred, but you got a hundred and five thousand mm-hmm. dollars hanging over your head, so that's affecting this decision. The beauty of your question is once you make this decision, you set a wedding budget, you stick to it, a full breakdown, you run a wedding like it's a project for research, mm-hmm. okay? And uh, then you can stick to it. It's not gonna randomly happen, in other words. In other words, if you say we're gonna spend uh twelve thousand five hundred dollars i don't care i just made that number up then you have to decide okay how much on the reception how much on the videographer uh how much on the location uh how much are we going to put into the how many groomsmen and uh, bridesmaids uh and gifts and uh you know you gotta you gotta line item out this budget because your biggest item in most weddings is the reception Hmm. budget wise I've, I've i've been involved in the background way in the background uh of, of three Ramsey weddings uh, in the last few years and but we did run them on a budget and we did run them like a project and um, because that's the only way dad's putting his freaking money in there so um, but the whole point is is you you do all this and then it takes the pressure off because Mm -hmm. we're going to spend x number of dollars on the dress which means you're not going to spend 2x and you don't have to make all these ambivalent stress-based decisions over and over and over again once you make the one decision does that make sense completely so I think your 20s a little high, but okay. not way high. I don't think you're crazy. And once you make the Wonderful. decision, I don't want to be. <laughs> once you make that decision, have some peace with yourself. Yeah, right. You know, you tap out on other people's expectations because some people are going to think you spent too much. Some people are going to think you didn't spend enough, and it's not their dead gum wedding. 
I like that. And there's, there's, Dave, help me with this, um, and and Katrina will benefit from the conversation. I I, I feel this tension, which is she owes one hundred five thousand bucks. Man, you got to get this thing taken care of. And the math part of me says, go to the justice of the peace, work really hard to get your debt paid off, and then throw a big party in a couple of years. Then there's another side of me that says we have stripped our culture. Mm-hmm. of every sort of important yep. heritage Agreed. ritual we've just sucked the soul out of our culture Agreed. and i would say no if you're going to if you're going to do something right mm-hmm. do a wedding upright yeah cuz you're going to yeah. do it once and you're going to yep. do it big and it's yep. going to be something that you it's going to be a touchstone for the rest of your life yep Help me find some wisdom in between those two that, things. I think you're exactly right. Okay. And, and so the point is you don't go crazy. You're not trying to make a reality show out of this dead gum thing, right, and on the one hand. But now if someone calls and says, uh, look, we're bound and determined. We both just want to do the JP. Mm-hmm. We're just going to go, we're gonna go to the preacher's office and, and get this done. I'm not going to be mad at you for doing that. That's your choice. Right. But I also don't want to say as your financial advisor, you have to do that because otherwise you're unwise. Okay. Because part of personal finance is this is a milestone mm-hmm. and she needs a ring and she needs a wedding and she needs a bride's dress, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there's a milestone here and, and there's a celebration around this. And Wedi- there's historical precedent for, for, for as long as there years, have been, right? as long as there have been weddings, they've been a big deal. Right. You know, <laughs> there you go. Right. And so, funerals, right? Yeah. Weddings and funerals. And births. I yeah. mean, these are the tuning forks of life. They, mm-hmm. they reset your head. And so I think you need to have a wedding personally. I, I, I would, I, I mean, if, if you were my child, I, my, one of my grown kids that came to me, I'd say, you need to spend something on it, but let's not go hog wild. I, I'm kind of my head, just the math that we've all bounced around Katrina, I'm bouncing between 10 and 15 in my head right now. That makes sense. But if you come back and say, yeah. you know, we talked about it, we're going to do seven, I'm cool with that. If, or we're going to do 17, I'm cool with that. But what I do want you to do is I want you to set that number. Pay cash for it. Pay cash for it. Be free after that because you're going to say, you know, a budget that you set and are in control of the number then sets you free to make a lot of decisions on what you're not going to do. You're not going to overspend. You know, this is not an Academy Award motion picture. We need a few videos. <laughs> hey, and, and Katrina, <laughs> does this guy like you? Yes. A lot? I hope so. <laughs> you know, yes. a lot. Uh, he's a good guy? Mm-hmm. So I don't want you to walk into your wedding as though you are the ball and chain here financially. I want you to walk in with your head held high. He has agreed to take you and all of you. Yep. And then y'all are going to work on this debt together. If you walk in already ashamed of who you are and your financial position that's going to start your marriage off at a step down and then you're going to have this weird inequity thing that's going to go on it's going to rattle around through your relationship for years to come walk in with your head held high you put all the money on the table all made the some mistakes the table. but i'm willing to own that and we're going to attack them and it's in the past the rear and view mirror is smaller than the windshield that's right that's right but go in with your head held high he loves you and he's committed to you and all of you and y'all gonna do this thing together yeah, you're, you're awesome. Thank you for calling in. That's a really good question to talk through. Um, and, and, you know. I've just watched our culture strip it all away. Yep. And, 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 and Well, the, I mean, I've had people come in and go, my wife's going to sell her diamond ring for the debt snowball. And I'm like, no. Right. But no. it's even further, like, I mean, knocking if it's a, down. If it's a $48,000 diamond ring, we'll talk about it. But, I mean, if it's a forty, if it's a typical, you know, diamond ring for, no, you keep yeah. your dad gum ring. It doesn't, $10,000 out of 100 when you make 100 doesn't change this equation much, by the way. Correct, correct. But there's something about knocking down, I don't know, this is where I can get off the rails. There's something about knocking down Grandma's house so we can cram two tall and skinnies on that little lot so we all feel good. What have you been, driving around Nashville? I'm just, there's something about heritage, man, and... Um, it's just finding that balance, that wisdom balance. Yeah, I'm with you. I agree. This is The Ramsey Show.
In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the Dead Free Stage, Chris and Caitlin are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, good. doing how are great. You? Welcome, welcome. Good to have you guys. Where do you live? Uh, San Antonio, Texas. Good. And you're here to do a Dead Free Scream. How much did you pay off? We paid off $230,000. And your, how long did this take? Uh, we started um, fe- um, February of 2015, and then we made our last payment on Christmas Day of this year. So six years? <laughs> Roughly. Just shy of six years. <laughs> Just shy of six years. All right, very good. That's and your range grind, of income yeah. during that time? We started at 38, and then we ended at 150. Okay, cool. So with that oh, length wow. of time and that large an amount, was that student loans or did you pay off your mortgage? Oh, gosh. It was majority <laughs> student loans. We it, borrowed a lot. Yes. Uh, we actually looked at the the student loans as like a giant credit card where we were just living off of it, um, maxing out our loans and uh, what referred to the reaping my fruit before we even planted the seeds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. What's your degrees in? Uh, my degree is in nuclear medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, but currently, I work for a tech, uh, it, a tech company. So. Okay. And I am a physical therapist assistant. Very cool. Okay. Well, two okay. great career fields, but yes, boy, did you yeah. pay dearly for them, huh? Yes, we so did. Much. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what, what's your household income now? 50? 150? 150. Between the two of you. Yes, okay. Sir. And probably on the way up, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How old are you two? I'm 33. And I will be 38 later this year. All right. And 230000 cleared off in six years. So tell us the story. What happened? Um, it all started um, back in 2015. Uh, my boss at the time, shout out, Chad Keck, hey. Um, he gifted all of his employees a uh, the financial peace book. Mm-hmm. And I read it and I thought, wow, there's a plan for this. It makes so much sense because we were at a point where we borrowed so much we couldn't actually borrow anymore. Mm-hmm. Chris was in school. I had just gotten my adult job. And I read the book and was like, oh, this gives me every step, how to, how to save, how to start paying my student loans. It, it gave us a way out. Mm-hmm. And so after reading the book, I brought it to Chris. I was like, Chris, I think this is a, you've got to read this. Please read this. I've never had you asked you to read a book before, but please read this book, Anna. Well, yeah, reaction. I read it and, and uh, immediately came to her and was like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's, let's do this. And and uh, she's like, okay, one of the first things I want to do is I want to cut the cable off. I'm like, oh, you want to do what? <laughs> um, um, and she's like, yeah, and I want to. What wanna, did I just sign uh, up for? Exactly. Yeah, but I won't and, and, then she, <laughs> and then she wanted to, to um, move down an apartment. We had a two bedroom, really large apartment. She's like, I also want to move down. I'm like, wait, what? So I had to go back and reread your book. Um, I was like, I missed something apparently along the way. When someone with a degree in nuclear medicine says this is how it's going to be, that's, you just go, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 there you um, go. But then uh, once I read your book and uh, I caught that part of the gazelle intensity and um, one of the first things I looked at was the fact that I had this brand, this F-150 I've wanted since high school. And um, we Uh-oh. were, yeah, we had, uh, we had what you referred to, the, the log jam. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how are we going to break this up? Because we had $40 a month, $40 left over at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how are we going to do this? And I, I looked at my shiny truck and said, oh, I'm going to go sell that. And my wife was like... She's like, I, well, I didn't want to tell you to do that, but I'm so glad you want to do that. <laughs> I was like, I can't force you to do it, but man, I'm so glad you decided on your own. I no. took your house. But you're and a cable real book. man no, now that you decided that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so I sold that truck and I got a, a little three thousand dollar Prius and then uh, signed up for a pizza delivering company. Wow. And I uh, started delivering pizzas to pay cash for my college for the rest wow. of the way. Wow. What did you make a month delivering pizzas? Oh, man. Uh, I was pulling at least like $100 a night every single time doing that, okay. especially so whenever the Spurs How many nights a month? Um, I was doing that five days a week during that time. So you're making wow. like two, $3,000 a month. Just just off of that, but that was yeah. all going to make sure that we I don't know. take any more student loans. I, I got that, but I mean, <laughs> still, that's a lot of pizza money. That's yes, sir. Very well done. Yes, but sir. I, I want to note that yeah. because when you made this decision, you started working really hard, and your hard work was to keep you at – from not digging anymore you weren't even going you weren't getting ahead at this point you worked this hard just to stay to stay level and finish school yeah Yeah. yeah, between between that and the fact that i was in school with this need for gazelle intensity at the time it was equivalent of if the uh, cheetah got a head start and i'm just rearing back behind the gate waiting to catch up and then (laughs) as soon as i finished school i was working seven days a week three different jobs wow 
Good for you, man. Wow. Yeah. And then six years later, you're done. Six years later, so that's a long time. Yes, sir. It, it and Caitlin, you know, when a Texas guy sells his truck for a Prius, that's he's all in. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, <laughs> he's all in. God, that was a hard uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> Even you're like, I don't know, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud of him though, because that that truck got nine miles to the gallon. I was like, we can't even afford the gas. Mm. <laughs> man, that's that's impressive. Well, when you're willing to live like no one else so that later you can live like no one else, it works. Yes, sir. Yeah. It yep. works. Just and now you're, now you're free. Sleep. You're 30 years old and some change, and you got no debt at all, and you make 100 and a half on your way to 200 and a half. And, you know, oh, my gosh. you got you, it, Your future is multi-millionaires. Yes, sir. Yep. It's, it's right plan. there. In, I can see it. I mean, I see the math. I've watched it for 30 years. You're, you're just going to do it. I'm so proud of y'all. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. It's amazing. I mean, your hard work, your sacrifice. Okay, we talked about several things you did on the journey. Is there anything you want to add when I say, when people ask, how'd you do this? What do you tell them? Definitely consistency and creating a budget. I know a lot of people say, you know, doing the budget was the thing, but we thought we were on a budget until we actually did a budget together. Um, Cause I was the one that mainly took care of the finances. And when I got him involved, we were like, oh, we're missing some things. We're not covering everything. Um, but once we got a budget, we realized what we could afford. Um, to keep us out of debt and it kept us on the same page and helped us communicate more. It was just the whole journey was the best marriage counseling we've ever done mm. since we never did it. And so I'm glad we went through this. Mm. Um, so we're always on the same page and have the same goals now. Yeah. I think for me, it was as the key is to his belief, um, whether you're paying off debt or trying to lose weight or try to quit smoking. If you don't believe that what you're doing is, is not working, if you don't believe the process is working, or if you don't believe that the other side of all of this is worth it, mm -hmm. then you're not going to pursue it as much without struggling. There yeah. was times where I was metaphorically crawling on my hands and knees because mm -hmm. I was physically tired and emotionally exhausted from working so much. Mm -hmm. But it's knowing that this was a light at the end of the tunnel, I, I kept pushing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Very, very, you're right. Very impressive. I mean, people who, if you want to uh, sacrifice or, or embrace pain with no potential outcome, that's just mental illness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to have, there it's has torture. to be a reason to do this. There has to be a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not an oncoming well, it pain. There has to be a little bit in there. In there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just strange, man. So you guys, no, that's very, very, very well done. Very well done. What was the hardest part for you? <sighs> It was literally the day by day and knowing it would take us so long. When we started, we knew it'd be at least five years. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the different roadblocks that came, you know, with medical bills, mm -hmm. and, uh, global pandemic. Mm -hmm. and oh, there's that. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little, little bit. And then not to mention Texas uh, had a nice little snowpocalypse that happened recently. Yes. Oh, well. yeah, that helped. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had that too. Um, but definitely day by day, just uh, being each other's cheerleader and getting through. Um, one of our biggest goals is we want to get a house. Yeah. Uh, since we're in such a small apartment. And we knew if we don't do this, it's not even a possibility. Yeah. That's not even going to happen. Well, so. now you can. Yeah. For sure. We have more You've options now. Well done. Well I'm so done. proud of you guys. This is oh, so cool. Thank you so they, much. They're amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. And your marriage, come what may, come the house buying, come kids, come in-law challenges, come up. Mm -hmm. you, have a, you have a six-year chain that y'all have built that no nothing's going to come your way that you can't figure out and sit down at a table and work together because that that same skill you learn budgeting is how you're going to sit down and approach hard conversations and challenges and job layoffs and job yeah. successes and hey we got to move somewhere else and whatever that's There's what's going to come your way built into their brains now that's right it's who you guys are i'm so proud of you man chris and caitlin san antonio two hundred and thirty thousand dollars paid off in six years making 33 to 150 they did it hard work count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. All right, everybody, you might want to turn your volume down a little bit. <laughs> All right, right. Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. We're debt-free! Yeah! yeah. Wow! Unbelievable. This so cool. is The Ramsey Show.
Thanks for joining us, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Rachel's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Better than I deserve. How can I help? So my husband and I recently bought our first home, and we're trying to figure out how much is too much to spend on some updates and purchases for the house. Uh, updates and oh, oh, you want to do some renovation after you bought it? Yes. So we're looking to do some new paint, some carpet. We need a few appliances um, because the sellers are taking some of them with them, um, and just kind of looking at some big price tags and not wanting to spend too much money. Okay. Um. Number one, do you have the cash to do whatever it is we're talking about? No debt. Yes. Okay. And do you have that above your emergency fund? Yes. And you are debt-free except the house? Uh, we actually don't have a mortgage either. Oh, well, that's nice. So you pay cash <laughs> for this house? Yes. Wow. So what's the house? What would you pay for it? Uh, we paid two ninety for it. Good for you. How would you do that? Thanks. Um, our parents helped us out with about half, and then we are just the big, big savers who never liked debt. Okay, cool. So you have a $300,000 house that you paid cash for. How old are you? Uh, 24. Good God almighty. You are a freak. <laughs> yeah. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> That's so cool. So man. what are you thinking about spending on these renovations? Um, in total, probably about 25000 and you have the 25000 Yes, do it. Yes. Yesterday. Do it. You are not, <laughs> listen, the two of you, the way your brain and your relationship is put together, the chances of you overspending or being impulsive on something is almost None. zero. It's almost zero. Okay. So. Okay. You, I would probably tell you to add to it just because, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> just to have the enjoyment just, yeah yeah yes. spend thirty thousand okay yeah <laughs> yeah you guys are incredible very well done what's your household income uh combined about 150 wow what do y'all do for a living um i'm an analytics and my husband's an engineer so how did you learn that this that these principles were important where'd you learn all this from your mom and dad or what yeah, my I remember my mom listening to you in the car when I was in elementary school when she was uh, picking me up from school. It's genetic and, for uh, you at this point, right? <laughs> right, exactly. It's and a then financial met a piece, really baby. great guy who was yeah just right on board right at the start. So, so that sounds like a joke, like a an analytics person, an engineer walk into a bar, right? What do y'all do for fun? <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you get a bottle of wine and some um, spreadsheets, and you're like, this is, like, like what do y'all do for fun? Like, I'm being, I'm being serious. Know. Yeah, we were recently married, and, um, you know, we like to go take trips, but haven't been able to do that too much. But, I don't know, we're just kind of homebodies, so. Yeah, good for you. We, hey, let me ask you something. What is, the, oh, what, is the, what is the thing you're thinking about buying for this house that you really – you, you you don't want to do it because you think it's over the top and crazy. Um, we'd like to get some really nice patio set up outside. Yeah, I think you need so. to build a full on outdoor kitchen. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> and let let him uh, listen, engineer. Here, here's design what it. I'm doing. Okay, there's three things that you can do with money. You can give it. You can live it, spend it in other words, and enjoy it, um, or you can invest it. You have no trouble saving and investing, but it's got, it, it right. is a good exercise for you to also learn to enjoy money. I very seldom have to have that conversation <laughs> on this show. Most of the time I'm like, quit spending like you're in Congress, but you need to loosen up and enjoy it because you're, you're very disciplined. You're very intentional. I'm so thankful your mama made you listen when you were in elementary school. So you're a financial peace, baby. I'm glad that we're part of your story of incredible success, but part of your success is generosity and part of your success is enjoying the money as well as continuing to be very careful, very wise, and very intentional. And it's hard to get off the rails with a paid for house of twenty four, paid for three hundred thousand. Yeah, house. yeah, making one hundred and a half, making one hundred and fifty grand, and 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 they're 
you know that those career fields are both a, a going up. Highly from, transferable field, right? and they're very going. They're going up from there. Right. I mean, they're going to make in in two years will be at two hundred easy right, right. between the two of them. So they're they're going to you guys are going to be multi millionaires, uh, and, and and your outdoor kitchen isn't going to mess that up. It's going to help your homebodiness to have a cool outdoor kitchen, right? I love this. That's wow, so cool. what a cool story. Zev's in San Francisco. Hi, Zev. Hi, Dave. Um, long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, really, it's an honor to speak with you. You too, sir. Um, the re- Thank you. Um, the reason I'm calling was because, unfortunately, my father died about five months ago, leaving oh, me wow. a house in San Francisco. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, left me a house in San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, but the, the silver lining, I guess, as it were, is that he did leave me a house in San Francisco. Um, and a pretty sizable estate. He left me about a house worth about $2 million and an estate worth about $4 million on top of that. How old are you? Um, I'm 32. Okay. Are you married? And I'm not married. Okay. Nope. All right. Go ahead. Um, and I came into this, I was already worth about $300,000 when this all happened. Mm-hmm. Um, my annual income is around the $40,000 mark. I actually am a law school dropout. I I dropped out of law school about five years ago to caretake for my father and never went back. So that's kind of the situation from a like career standpoint. I've been teaching in the meantime. What's your question? um, Middle. My question is the house is falling apart, but I'm very sentimentally attached to it, but I hate San Francisco and California. And I'm facing like a lot of repair costs and, but I do have a very low tax rate because of this thing called prop 13 in California. I pay about a thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Um, my question is, do I take money from this estate and just dump it into the house and fix it up? Or do I try to get over the sentimental piece of this? And look at it more from a financial perspective and just say, you know what, this house is a money pit and sell it and go live out of state uh, where I can live the kind of life that I want for a much lower cost of living. That's basically my question. I like the emotional simplicity of selling it now and moving. Okay. The downside Mm -hmm. of that is that that's going to hurt because of the freshness of the story. If your dad had passed two years ago. It would feel you will feel more released than you do with him passing five months ago. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, your sentimental Absolutely. value from that for that house is going to go down every day that you own it um, mm-hmm. from, from today forward, and so it's going to be emotionally easier to let it go a year from today than it is today. Uh, but aside from you know your your grieving and your attachment to the house and your memories and all of those things. Um, you also have this other side that sees a fresh start, a clean whiteboard, and there's a lot of health in you moving on. John, from a grief perspective, if he sells it now and truncates some of that, those feelings, does that is that a problem? No, because every day you stay there is going to be a penalty paid against the memory of your father. And you already have part of your heart as much as you love your dad that says, I gave up this mm-hmm. dream, I gave up this world to love and honor and take care of him. And continuing that way of, of living is going to end up compressing this memory of your dad. And so I'm going to tell you to sell a house. Go be free. Selling this house is in your future anyway. Sell your house. Go start over clean. That's the best way to honor your father moving forward. Yeah. And, and be rehabbing, that money. rehabbing that house is going to be more emotional than sitting in it for six months. And you're going to sell it anyway. So yeah. get I just, it done. I'll just sell it and move on. Yeah. I really would. And that has nothing to do with financial. That's just being... It's just opening the next chapter in the book of your life. This is The Ramsey Show. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. 
you can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones as we talk to you about your life and your money. The phone number is 888 825 Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Robert in Brooklyn, New York, starts us off this hour. Hey, Robert, how are you? Good afternoon, Dave. Doctor John, how are you guys? Great, man. How can we help? Great, great. Um, about a year ago, uh, my father passed away. Uh, he was my uh, business partner. We have general contracting company, and uh, and a very you know, and obviously my best friend as well. And uh, we had two properties that we invested in uh, recently that now I'm half partners with my mother by default. And I wanted to see what your guys' opinion on uh, what I should do with them. Hmm. I'm sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. Is there, um, okay, you and your dad work together every day. And so you could fight things out. You could talk things out for the business or for the investments or anything else. If you had a renter problem, you just talk it through. How's it going with your mom? Uh, essentially, I'm doing everything, which is fine. She she had no involvement with the business. So uh, I just since he passed away, I've been doing everything. Uh-huh. Do you want to still be in business? Dr. John, it's a conversation for a different time, but that's, that's where I'm at right now. I, I mean, I do. I, I do enjoy being a general contractor. Uh-huh. It has its ups and downs. Yeah. But um, it's, so are you uh, asking about the are you asking about the now. houses? What to do with them? Or what, what are we what are we trying to get to here? Yes, the properties. I'm trying to figure out what I should do with them. Okay. All right. Well, there's nothing wrong with you managing them and owning half with your mom, as long as there's not some kind of toxic stuff going on. It's not putting a strain on anybody. There's also nothing wrong with you selling both of them and splitting up the money. Give her some money and you take some money and you can even help her get with an investment broker and do some investing. Um, you know, so she's got some of that money coming in. Uh, what would she like to do? Uh, she, she's left it in my hands. Mm -hmm. Um, she is on board either way. Um, my father and mother, they, they had a great marriage, but I never realized how little, she was involved in the finances. So yeah. since um, his passing, I've basically had to give her a crash course on, on how everything gets paid for, you yeah. know, and my, my, the two properties we, I would say we invested about, I would say six to 700,000. Mm-hmm. They make about 90 gross a year mm-hmm. and they're worth about 2 million if mm-hmm. you sell them. Mm-hmm. So in that circle, kinda, that, that loops me back to my question do you want to keep doing this? Um, cause if, if your mom's indifferent and the finances here, if you sold these properties and walked away with it, with a, a hefty return on this, it sounds like the real question for you is, do you want to still keep being in this business? You're, you're in it with your mom financially, but she's not help coach. She's not trying to jump in and manage it. And I think we should do the lawn this way. And I want to use this roofer. And so really it comes down to, do you want to do this or not? There's nothing wrong with either answer. No. In terms of the financial mm-hmm. or business aspects of it, since there's no toxicity, um, it's I, I let me ask you something. I think I'm hearing a little bit of resentment for her being what we call in the South a kept woman. Uh, she was so taken care of and so in the dark. And she's just like, you keep doing all the work like your daddy did and just send me the money. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I mean, not exactly in that sentiment, but yes, yeah, she, she's concerned about me having to take on the burden of supporting her because I, I gave her my father's paycheck for the past year and everything to kind of get everything settled. But I'm at the point where if I continue the business, I need to free up that capital to hire people to help me. Yeah, you do. A, a very big spot. Yeah, the business is a separate um, equation from the real estate, is it not? But, yes, but they're, it's, they're, to me, they're intertwined because if I sell it, I could reinvest in my own business. She so Robert, no Robert, you, you still have avoided my question. What do you want to do? 
Dr. John, what do, my, what do I want to do? It's, what, uh, what do you want to do with the real estate? What do you do with the real estate? And then man? what do you want to do with the business? The I know business you, I want to keep, the, the real estate I want to sell. Sell it. Done. Sell it. Split the money with her. Help her do some investing. Help her go through. I'll give you Ramsey Plus. Let's put her through a money course so she learns how to be a, a, a person who handles her own funds. Okay? We'll teach her how to handle money, and I'll pay for it. Sure. I'll take care of widows here. Wow. That's what we Christians do. And so we'll do that. We'll take care of her in that regard, not by taking care of her, but by showing her how to take care of herself, teaching her to fish rather than giving her fish. And then you, she's going to have a million dollars. And then you're going to use some of this money to buy her out of your business, aren't you? No, no. She has nothing in the business. It's not to buy her out. Okay. I, so she doesn't have any ownership mind. of the business yeah. from the estate? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. Cool. Sell the real estate, split the money, help her get set up and get running, and you use the money on your side to run your business. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Does that make you smile? <laughs> it did. Yeah, it did. Okay. Does your it's is your dad is your dad in heaven smiling? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, I think he is. I think I'm doing a good. You job. took care of your mom <laughs> and you're running your business and you're a grown man. You're gonna hand your mom a million dollars, Robert. You did a good job. You, taught, you, you sat down and taught your mom how to take care of herself. You gave her a gift of freedom. You're a good son, man. You are. You're a good man. Because, um, uh, 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 listen, a scumburger wouldn't be wrestling with these things. No, they would have sold the house and given mom $50,000 and said, look at all this money. <laughs> right? And, hey, those are the kind of sons that call my show sometimes, Dave. <laughs> like, they are out there, Robert, and it's not you. Yeah, you're you're a good man. So hold on. I'll have Kelly pick up, and we'll get your mom signed up for a year in Ramsey Plus. She can go through Financial Peace University. She can learn how to do a budget on every dollar. There'll be coaches in there to help her. Uh, You can walk with her through the whole process to ensure that she's learning the lessons. There's accountability with groups and coordinators in there. It is Ramsey Plus is the full package for you to do the whole thing. And it's going to be free to her. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you hold on. Kelly will pick up, and we'll get that going. And there's nothing wrong with starting Ramsey Plus with a million dollars head start, right? There's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> sitting, sitting down with a, with a Smart Investor Pro and getting that money invested. What's the best way we can yeah. do this? That's right. So if you're listening to this show, one of the reasons people listen to the show is entertainment mm-hmm. because humans are just freaking entertaining. Yeah. But – the other thing you, you, if my challenge to you guys listening is to do what I've done for 30 years doing the show, and that is what is your takeaway from some of these things? So here's your takeaway, 45 year old couple. Both of you need to know how to handle money because one of you is not going to be here someday. That's right. You are not empowered, you are not equipped. You cannot just say, it's a famous Southern saying, whatever you want to do, honey. No! Because one day, honey, won't be there. you got to learn how to do this. It is unfair to everyone in the picture for you to intentionally not know how to do this stuff and someone else take care of you. You're a grown-up. Fussing at mama. This is The Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings.
About 40 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits in 2020. Congress just passed a new COVID relief plan that changed the unemployment tax rules. Here's the change. Your first 10,200 of unemployment benefits are free from federal taxes. Do not claim them as income. Other unemployment benefits are taxable. There's a couple of cases where your unemployment will be taxed if you made over 150000 total or if you receive more than 10200 in unemployment. You will have to claim your unemployment benefits as income in either of those cases. If you want to make sure you're filing your taxes right, we've got the help you need. You can do them online with the Ramsey Smart Tax software for just a few dollars. Or if they're looking a little complicated, we'll connect you with a pro that you can feel good about. Text the word tax to 33789. Text tax to 33789. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Allison is in Cincinnati. Hi, Allison. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and John. How are you guys? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Great. Well, um, thank you for taking my call. My husband and I have been avid listeners since 2007, and we paid off all our debt back in 2012. Wow. And so by, yeah, so by listening to you guys all those years, um, my husband was actually able to start a business in um, 2016, and he does remodeling and some landscaping. Um, primarily his work, though, is um, remodeling. He does have a great customer base. But the problem we are running into is um, he's a one-man show, and he's he's bombarded with work um, and so much that he, he can't keep up. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a good problem to have, but, but now I think we're, it's at the point where we need to um, – you know, hire some people. Mm -hmm. And so I have some reservations though, regarding hiring people though, because, you know, I don't like the payroll withholdings, um, finding trustworthy people that do quality work. Mm -hmm. And then of course, being able to pay them. Um, we're still trying to perfect the bidding process, Mm -hmm. um, bidding jobs accordingly. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've tossed around the idea of actually like 1099 people, Mm-hmm. Um, that way they would handle their own taxes and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're really stuck on what to do. And I hear you talk about your contractor friend all the time and, and um, how much money he actually makes just being a handyman. So mm-hmm. I'm just calling to get some guidance and to find um, what would be the best way to approach this problem. Well, you guys are incredible. Well done. Well thought out. <laughs> uh, you, you've accur- accurately identified some of the mines in the minefield. That you've got to miss, that you got to, you have to walk around to have the opportunity to grow the business, um, but all of the things are that none of those are insurmountable. They can all be handled, um, but it's like anything you do the first time is scary, and you'll be better at it the second time than you were the first time. So uh, you want to learn enough about it that you don't do harm to yourself or someone else, but um, also cut yourself some slack because uh, I've been hiring people to work on our team now for over 25 years, and I'm just now getting good at it. Uh, <laughs> I don't do it anymore. But, I mean, you see what I'm saying. It, the, the first time I hired somebody, I was stupid. I was dumb. I thought if you just hired somebody, they would work. Allison, even I got in the building, man. He's not that great at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, here's the upside and the reason you do need to do this. You need to face your fears and walk through this. Because right now your husband is a wonderful contractor. He's a hardworking guy. Uh, he owns his job. He doesn't yet own a business. When you're a one-man band and you're sick, zero money comes in. When you go on vacation, zero money comes in because there's no one else doing the work carrying the water but you. And so you own your job. And so it is going to stabilize your life to have at least a little bit of growth. To go to the one to five employee range is going to change your life in good ways. Uh, A, you'll be able to make more money. B, you'll be able to get more work done, help more people. C, when you're on vacation, they're all still working if you hired well and led them well. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it stabilizes your life and increases your income if you do this properly. But it is a challenge to get good people, and it is a challenge to keep good people. And uh, doing the paperwork for the stinking payroll is a pain in the butt. 
Um, but you can have a little company do that for you. Get in touch with one of our tax ELPs. A lot of those have bookkeeping services, and they can run your payroll for you. There's other places you can outsource. It's a little difficult to outsource one or two people on a payroll to a payroll company, but you can do it. It's just, you know, it's, it's you, it's not that hard to do it yourself, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. I'd recommend you out, you have an accountant do it for you or a, a bookkeeper of some kind do it for you. As far as the hiring okay. process goes, your husband has to add some skills uh, to his tool belt, no pun intended. Uh, he currently is a great contractor. He's good with customers. He's good with getting the actual work done. He's handy, uh, all of those things. Now he has to start to learn how to lead and hire Right. And fire and confront bad behavior and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so that's a that's a whole nother skill set that's called leadership and called running a business. And uh, but Mm -hmm. it's a wonderful journey. I've been on that journey myself for 25 years. I am getting better at it, all joking aside, Mm -hmm. but I haven't arrived. I still am learning things every day. I still make mistakes every day as a leader. But uh, but you you get a lot better at it, and you build your competence and your confidence just like he does swinging a hammer. The same thing. Right. And as far as the money now, part goes, the- as far as the money part goes, you hire people that can make you more than they cost you. You cannot do the ten ninety nine idea. Uh, it's uh, it, it, I'm. I, it's not pr- proper to say it this way, but it's against the law. It doesn't work. Okay. The law says that if someone it acts like an employee, walks like an employee, talks like an employee, they're an employee, even if you declare them to be 1099. 1099 is an independent subcontractor. They run their own business. They don't work exclusively for you. You don't furnish them materials. You don't furnish them jobs. And you don't furnish them hammers and saws. And you're doing all of that. What you have is not 1099. You have an employee. And if you get audited with a 1099 on there and it's supposed to have been an employee, you're going to get penalized. Okay. That's good to know. So. What what would you think would be, like, what's the, I guess, formula how much should you have in reserves to be at the point where, you know, how much do you, you, have you know in you have enough? How much do you have in reserve? Um, we have probably like 25000 right now in You're reserves. Fine. You're fine. Okay. You're fine for two hires because you're going to hire people that are going to make what kind of money? Um, I don't know. We haven't really discussed the no, topic I mean, of pay they're, yet. They're not going to make 160000 they're gonna make oh, no. they're gonna no. make thirty thousand bucks, right, or forty thousand right. bucks, right? I mean, something like that. So, you know, you you've got enough to cover easily three months of them producing absolutely no income, and they're only a cost. Okay. And so you could start start talking about putting the first two on, but lay out your game plan to go. Okay, I'm gonna be able to get this much more income in as if I'm gonna spend. $3,000 a month on this guy, I'm going to make $6,000 a month on this guy. So he's not only right. free, he puts money in my pocket. You have to have, mm-hmm. you have to make more on them than they cost you or your, your formula for hiring people makes you go broke. Okay. So then when he bids, he should, he should bid for two guys versus one guy. Bids. When he bids a job. No, he needs to bid the I'm job. Sorry. If it takes two guys to do the job, you do that. Uh-huh. But I'm just saying, okay. in other words, your husband's doing job A right now. Job B, he can't do. The new hire is going right. to go do job B, so you're going to get the profits from job B over and above what you paid the new guy. Okay. Got and it. so you paid the new guy mm-hmm. out of job B, the extra work, and... You're going to make a profit on job B that you wouldn't have gotten because you couldn't have done it because your husband's on job A. Right. Just dividing and conquering, basically doing double the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to increase the work level, increase the revenues as a result of having more workers. That's what I mean by they're paying for themselves. And it's recognizing it's a different job than the trade. You've, yep. got to, you've got to be as good as a leader and a hire and a fire and a bookkeeper. You've got to put that much effort as you did and to learn how to work that circular saw, right? Yeah, both of you do. Yeah. Yeah. And th- this is where people going from to their first team members really, really struggle. You really have to start studying leadership. It's a craft. Right. Hold on. I'm going to send you a copy of our book, Entree Leadership, and get you started.
In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage, Krista is with us. Hi, Krista. How are you? Good. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. Where do you live? Uh, near Toledo, Ohio. Near? Where do you live? Uh, Genoa, Ohio. Okay. All right. Because I went to ice hockey camp in Bowling Green when I was a kid, just south of Toledo there. Yep. Close so, by. Right in your area. <laughs> cool. So, how much debt have you paid off? $90,858.02. Love it. How long did this take? 23 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, sixty-two dollars to $75,000. Cool. What do you do for a living? I teach agriculture to 7th through 12th grade students. Oh, wow. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. So, what kind of debt was the $91,000? Uh, $80,000 was student loans from Ohio State University and my master's degree at Capel University out of Minnesota. And then about a $10,000 car loan. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so, how long have you been out of school? Oh, gosh. Um... Graduated in 2012. Eight years, okay. Yeah, nine so. Nine years, whatever, yeah. And getting ready to be nine. And the 80000 is just hanging out, huh? Yep. Yeah, well, I decided to go back to get my master's degree, so I've now had that for about two and a half years. Yeah, but the rest of it's just been hanging out. Just, mm-hmm. just Sally Mae sure had her has. own bedroom. <laughs> so what happened 23 months ago lit you up? Uh, well, actually, uh, my brother and my parents have been through um, Financial Peace University. Uh-oh. And they, um, my, actually my brother for Christmas got me the book in 2017. I waited till a year later to find my first class. Uh-huh. Um, cause like most people, you're not sure, uh-huh. um, to believe it or not. Uh-huh. Um, so I waited for a year later. You think your found- brother joined a cult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so found a class and then I actually, in 2019 went through that and then, um, in 2020, I went through the, a second class just to keep me fresh and understanding what I'm doing as well. Yeah, while you were on the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good encouragement to, to loop back through or to coordinate a class. Sometimes people do that. So. Yeah. Well done. Okay, so what happened when you went in there that made you say, I can do this? Uh, just me going after goals and um, just wanting to pay off that debt because I don't want to have debt. Um, I want to be able to go and live and mm-hmm. go on vacations and, mm-hmm. and get Sally Mae out of the house. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. How's it feel? It feels great. Was it worth the sacrifice? It sure was. And I still continue to sacrifice things, but you still can save money in different ways and still not have debt. What was your biggest, hardest sacrifice during that 23 months? Um, telling people no, that I can't go out to eat. I only have $85 a month for my budget. <laughs> when the money's gone, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. That Because that, that's a social experiment. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Good did, for did, you. Did you have a group of people that hung with you and said, all right, we'll all come over then? Um, I mean, my parents. We just all hung out. <laughs> yeah. So, so you got a lot of family support all the yeah. way through. That's good. Yeah. That's good. What Excellent. was it like walking with middle and high school students while you're walking through this? Did they did you did they know you're doing this? So I did tell a lot of my students. Um, they actually teach FPU at my high school, mm-hmm. um, so they don't believe it. So I can't wait till I go back in my agriculture classes. They're going to all see this. Very wow. cool. <laughs> You're a YouTube star now. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. We're very, very proud of you. So uh, when you teach foundations for personal finance to high schoolers in a future class, which you may end up doing, I, be- I bet, uh, what are you going to tell them the secret to getting out of debt is? Um, staying on a budget and being persistent. Mm. 23 months. 23 sure months was. changes everything. Yep. And I definitely went into my savings. Um, I first did the $10,000 and that was still there. Mm. Did the next 10000 still was there. Mm. And then I did the next. So I taken $30,000 out of my savings to put towards that. Wow. And then punched it in the nose also over yep. the 23 months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for you. That's scary to do. <laughs> It, it was at first, and the debt was still there. Yeah. Doesn't go away. <laughs> nope. Doesn't go away till you pay it. I love it. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. And it's cool for these students to see that you're not a theory, you're not a good idea. You're walking, talking, living proof of what happens when you work really hard. For these kids that are going to go into agriculture, right, that plant seeds for today so that something will grow for tomorrow, you're a, you're a teacher that's walking the walk, and, and that – that multiplies your your effect on those young people. You're changing a bunch of 
family trees with the sacrifices you made. Good for you. Thank Amen. you. And so you, I know it's hard. If your brother's worth his salt, he's going to rub your nose in this a little bit. So good for oh, him. Oh, he came with her. Is, he, is he when I'm out here? Yeah, right. And mom hand. and dad are here too, right? Yep. <laughs> she got the cheering squad here. That's great. I love it. And a little bit of I told you so, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do it sooner? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Well done. Thank I know you. they are proud of you. Excellent job. We got a copy of Rachel Cruz's latest New York Times bestseller, Know Yourself, Know Your Money. Thank you. And uh, we'll come out and sign that and everything at the break here. So, so very proud of you. All right. It's Krista from the Toledo, Ohio area. $91,000 paid off in 23 months, making 62 to 75. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt free. Yeah. <laughs> So fun. So fun. The number of people now, I mean, Financial Peace Foundations and Personal Finance now taught in 48% of high schools in North America. And the number of people that have gone through Financial Peace University and Ramsey Plus now, got a Ramsey Plus membership, um, you know, get connected to every dollar, get on the budgeting app. It enables you to do the stuff that these folks are doing that are doing these debt-free screams. And so, you know, it, it's you, you need the information and the inspiration to do one of the hardest things you're ever going to do in your life, but one of the most rewarding things you're ever going to do in your life, and that is get yourself positioned to become wealthy. You get positioned to do that, most likely, by being clear of debt. So Ramsey, a Ramsey Plus membership will do all of that for you. You plan out every dollar. You connect your budget to your bank. You get custom budget reports. You get everything you need. There's a free trial for Ramsey Plus, a free trial at DaveRamsey.com. Just go to DaveRamsey.com and look for the free trial on Ramsey Plus. You get you get started on the whole thing. You will see how it all works. We'll walk you through every bit of it, and you'll have you know that's the almost every one of these people do their debt free screams have been through financial peace. Absolutely, and they've they've either taught it or they've they've talked about the accountability of the other folks in that group saying, hey, we're doing it too, we're doing it too, and everybody I know who has a budget has that month or those two months when they think, man, Duh. everybody who works out, it's like, I'm not doing Duh. that today. Everybody who fill in the blank and having a group of people with, you get that information, the inspiration, then you get that community around you that, that just is that prodding or that holds your arms up in the desert, man. Now you gotta, you, you gotta have some cheerleaders. Yeah. You can't just have people trying to drag you down. That's, you gotta have, I mean, there's lots of people tell you you can't win. That's, that's, that's the culture we live in. Yeah. Is, they don't want you to win because it no. makes them look bad. I call it the Titanic Syndrome. When that movie came out, it was every, everybody loved it until everybody loved it. And then it became cool to talk about how dumb that movie was. And, and it just came to beat it up, right? It's cool to, to look at somebody who's going after something and then think, why are you doing that? That's stupid. That's dumb. Man, and getting a group of people behind you, whether you're going for a run, whether you're going to debt, whatever that is, that is everything, Dave. Hmm. It's everything. Hmm. They did that with Disco, too. Did they? Well, disco was terrible. <laughs> no, it, it, it was cool. It was cool oh. un until until some rocker decided it wasn't cool, and then it wasn't cool anymore. It's the same thing. It was a whole movement. It's all, you ought to watch the uh, one of the, uh, the Bee Gees uh, documentary. It's a yeah. great documentary. So it, that, that, it's like they they made so stinking much money, and then all of a sudden, it's gone. They went from being gods to being like a symbol of foolishness or something. You know, it's the same kind of thing though. It was cool until it wasn't cool. Speaking of symbols, I don't want to take away from how extraordinary that debt-free scream was, but you mentioned something I'd never heard before that I just need a little bit more clarity on. You went to hockey camp. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is ice hockey camp? So much stories, so many stories and so little time <laughs> coming up on a commercial break. Oh, I see what yeah. you're doing here. James, cue the music. Quick, Red, quick, redneck, quick. redneck Southern hockey players. Can you imagine what this was? Oh, it was a fight and a hockey game broke out. Okay. It's That's rare it. that my mind is blown and Dave, I think you blew it. <laughs> I played all the way up into college. I had no idea. I don't know these things. I have antique... Um, ice skates sitting in my bookshelves in my, in my <laughs> study at home. They truly are antiques, no question. They're, they're funny. It's great. Looks like something you got at a flea market. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show.
Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. We're glad you're here. Phone number is 888 825 225. Joshua is with us. Joshua is in Fredericksburg, Virginia. How are you, Joshua? Hey, Dave. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. How can I help? So I just have a quick question. Um, I'm relatively new to your show, but I've been watching a lot of clips, and uh, I'm on my way. I'm on baby step number one, getting my money put away in savings. Um, I want to ask a question about when I'm moving full force onto step two. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to ask your advice on... I have the opportunity to act as a private auction, so I can flip a few cars a year. Um, and I wanted to know uh, if you agree with stuff like, you know, spend money to make money type side gigs where I can buy cars and flip them in the process of paying off debt to, you know, help me get more profits overall and pay things off quicker. Are you doing that with cash? Yeah, well, so instead of just putting it full force on the debt, I would put cash aside to buy cars on the cheap and then flip them. But um, you, when you buy the car, you're paying cash for the car. Yeah. That's what I mean. Okay. Yep. So well, give me an example. You would buy a car You buy a car for how much and flip it for how much? So I could probably get a car for two grand and easily flip it for four to five. Um, because like I said, I have private, I have access to a private auction. So the cars are a lot cheaper than anyone, you know, a public auction or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and what do you make a year at your day job? Uh, about 33 grand. I just started up a new job. Okay. All right. And how much debt do you have? So I have around 14 K in debt. Okay, cool. Yes, I would do that. Now here's let's think let's think through some guidelines because as you know, you can get sucked into this um and I you know, you can start you can put all the money back in and all this kind of stuff and then you then you ended up benefiting your debt payoff not at all, but you sure did get into a bunch of cars. Okay? So we don't want to do that. So it's one at a time and you take, you, you know, you, you say, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to put some seed money in or prime the pump, if you will. And so we're going to set 2000 bucks in. And then you buy that car and you flip it for 3500 And you pull the 2000 out to do the next deal, keeping it there. But the, anything above the 2000 goes on the debt every single time. Everything above the 2000 goes on to the debt. It not, okay. don't, don't buy a $2,200 car or a $3,000 car the next time you're buying a $2,000 car every time or whatever your, ba your, your baseline is. But you, what can happen is emotionally you get more caught up in doing the deals than you do actually causing the deals to benefit you. And you go, well, you know, I, I, you know if, gosh, if I turned a 2000 into three, I could turn a three into six, and then I could turn a four into eight. And then you get sucked into this vortex, and all the money's pouring back into this system you're building rather than in getting out of debt. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get you. I, I didn't even think about that. And knowing me, I would fall into that for sure. Well, you're a player. That's how I know to get, warn you against that, because I'm a player. It's the kind of thing I do. <laughs> And so I have to watch against it. And car auction directors love players because they say, man, if you just go to five on this, you can you can flip this for 14.3 easy. And it's just hard, hard. You have to be disciplined, right? Yeah, you really have to be disciplined. That's the purpose of an auction is to take advantage of undisciplined people. <laughs> or to pit disciplined people, undisciplined people against each other. Yeah, exactly. And then you get... Then, then all of a sudden, there's no room in the deal because you've overpaid. That's what you get into. But yeah, give yourself some real strict business operational guidelines, if you will, like I just laid out, something like I laid out, and then every time stick to them. Don't let your, uh, don't don't let the uh, uh, the greed on one shoulder talk you into losing your common sense on the other shoulder. And if there's no two thousand dollar deals to be had this particular Saturday, go home. You walk away. Go home. You walk away. Right. That's exactly right. That is a good plan. Rob is with us in Tampa, Florida. Hey, Rob. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Thanks uh, for taking my call. My pleasure. How can we help? Uh, so I have this out-of-state property that I want to get rid of. It's a, a, a rental property. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know whether or not... I would like your advice on either paying the capital gains or taking a 1031. I had my tax guy kind of look at it, and he estimated something about 
uh, seventy five thousand in capital gains. Back. So you got like a half million dollar gain? I uh, yeah, I think that where I'm trying to sell this out of state property, I think it's a four hundred thousand dollar gain. Uh, so you've got you've had it a while, and the uh, what's it sell for? I'm asking for upwards of over eight hundred. Yeah. Okay. And you've adjusted the basis down by depreciating it over the years. You have a lower adjusted basis. Am I right? I bought. Uh, yeah. I, I bought it ten years ago. Yeah. And you've uh, been depreciating it on your five. taxes. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. and every time you do that, that amount of depreciation comes off your basis and increases your gain. You understand that, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, that's what I'm talking about, adjusted basis. All right, so uh, a 1031 tax-deferred exchange will probably cost you 1500 to $2,000 in legal fees to execute. You have to have an IRS-approved closing company to do it in. Uh, you can sell the property into an escrow account with one of those companies, and then you have so many days, I believe it's 60 days to identify and six months to close on the other property. And that effects, effectually creates a trade, and you've rolled all of your equity and your basis over to the other property. Someday, uh, if you ever sell that property, you're going to pay even more capital gains because you will have lowered the basis even more at that point. So okay. uh, do you want rental property in your area uh if i can give you like a just a brief history so um i didn't expect to become an out-of-state landlord uh i always thought i was going to move back into that house but i like where i'm at now i wouldn't mind having rental property here but that house was really my house that i wanted to live in it's gone um, it's gone so you know, do you want this money to invest in mutual funds minus seventy five thousand dollars, or do you want to own rental property in your area? I think I want to. I was wondering if I could move back into it after a third ten thirty one exchange, and it be my house again. No, if you sell the house, you don't own it anymore. No, I know. So my question was, I'm sorry, whether or not to go ahead and just pay the capital gains tax, buy myself own house, or kind of do a 1031. You can't do a 1031 to your personal residence. It has to be to another rental property. Okay. So do you own a property um, in Tampa that you live in? No, I'm renting right now. Okay. So you want to use this money to buy a house with to live in? Yes. Okay, you cannot do that with a 1031. 1031 is a like-kind exchange, and it requires you go from rental to rental. I didn't know that not, either. Not, your, you not your personal residence. You can't mm -hmm. pour it into your personal residence. You can, and you can't sell okay, your personal I, I residence. Maybe you could. So pay the $75,000 in taxes, take the gain out, and buy you a nice house in Tampa, Rob. That's the answer. Sounds good. Thank you, don't you. Have, you don't have any other options, really. Uh, that that is your best choice at this stage of the game. Now, ten thirty one is about moving investments around. So you can do deferred. with a ranch or with a with a farm, as long as it's income producing. Okay. Yeah, like I had a friend that had a lake house, but he never rented it out, mm -hmm. so it never produced any income, and he sold it. And we were going to try to do a ten thirty one for him to get another lake house mm -hmm. from lake house to lake house, and I'm claiming that's like kind. And the tax guy looked at me cross eyed like I was an idiot because I was an idiot, <laughs> and and he said, you know, no, you can't do that because it never produced income. If he'd been renting it out occasionally as a resort rental or a B and B or you know VRBO or something, he probably could have done it to the moved it to the a different lake house. But uh, lake house to lake house doesn't work. Doesn't work. And I uh, ran into that a few years ago on a transaction I was helping a neighbor with. But uh, so what's the government's what is their long-term play? You know what? We'll do this another time. Was, well, why they even would allow a 1031 exchange? Well, they used to allow trade. You could trade properties and not have to pay the capital gain. That was all. Oh, uh, okay. So they're and this, this is effectively a trade. Okay. But they'll it's get like it trade. at some point. They're going to get it at some point unless you die, and then they're stepped up basis and you don't. So, okay. Lots of crap going on. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. My co-host today, Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, and also the host of the Dr. John Deloney show an explodingly popular podcast by the Ramsey Network everything going up on that so be sure you check out Dr. John Deloney's podcast uh, everyone else in America is if you haven't checked it you're one of the few so be sure and do that and you can participate in that show and call in on it uh, you can uh, send an email in Kelly will set you up to be a caller uh, whatever you want to do he takes calls and uh, gets into people's situations with their relationships Man, anything you can imagine, education, school, and marriages, and breakups, and relationships, and mental health issues, and anything having to do with mental health and anxiety and boundaries and all that. Yeah, yeah, and we get into everything, and we'll take those calls here today too. The phone number triple eight eight two five five two two five Asheville, North Carolina. Michael starts this hour. Hey, Michael, what's up? Hey, Dave, how are you? I've got my nine-year-old daughter with me here. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. We are very excited to be on your show. Thank you for taking our call. Well, we're honored to and have Dr. you. John, I, Dr. John, I got to say, I love your show. Whenever I'm having a bad day, I, I just listen to that. It makes me realize my life is so much better than some of the calls that you get. <laughs> I thought you were going to say your life's better than mine, and I was going to agree with you, but I appreciate oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I had a quick question about 529 plans. My wife and I are debt-free as of last year. We just started a 15-year mortgage. Um, income's around 115, looking to be at about 130 here later in the year, and we have about 225 in retirement. Um, I've been going back and forth with my um, uh, my in- investor. Um, I was telling him we were going to take your suggestion and put about 15% into retirement. Um, And he says, because we're behind, he was hoping we could do a little bit more. I know that's his job to do that. Um, I was toying with anywhere between five and six hundred dollars for a 529 split between a eight and a 10 year old. Um, And I just wanted your advice on what you would do if you were in my situation. An eight or a 10 year what? Uh, I I have two kids. One is. Oh, an eight and a 10 year old. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, well, if you get with one of our smart investor pros, uh, to get a second opinion, they will have you put 15% into retirement and you can run a calculation out as to how much you need to put for each child to be able to hit the goal by the time they're 18 and have their, the, the vast majority or whatever portion you say, you know, I want to have X number of dollars in that college fund by 18. Then you can back that in at current rates of return on mutual funds with a smart investor pro, and they can show you exactly what you need to put in there. Um, what you're proposing is not bad at all. That, that's wonderful. I mean, that's $6,000 a year you're putting in 500 bucks a month. Uh, obviously the older one would get a little more than the younger one because you've got m- a shorter time frame to get to a college fund. And so, okay. you know, it, it doesn't have to be a lot more cause they're fairly close in age, but, um, but you know, if you're going to do, are you going to do $500 total or $500 each? Uh, so the number is closer to about 600. I was thinking of putting a little bit more in for the, um, the older one mm-hmm. and a little less for the younger one. Yeah, that's exactly what I'd do. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would do that and and I would be putting 15% of your income into retirement. And above that, anything else you can find, I'm going to put on the house and let's get that house paid off. And, um, uh, so, and and again, if you want a second opinion, just click SmartVestor at DaveRamsey.com and you can get with one of the SmartVestor pros. The thing about the SmartVestor pros is they're going to always give you, uh, advices that's congruent with what you hear Mm -hmm. on this show. It's not going to be you're getting one set of advice from me, one set of advice from them, and then you don't know what to do. Right. It, it should be anyway. We, we're very, we spend a lot of time, a lot of effort with them, uh, making sure they have the heart of a teacher and that they know what we teach here so that you go to them and you get 
you know, you got, I want to do this Ramsey plan. Okay, the baby steps, here's exactly what we're doing. And then you don't have this push and pull of, well, I wish you'd do more than that. You don't have that kind of stuff coming out of that. Whenever I, I, in the past, when I've sat down with a with the financial advisor and they've, when they say this phrase, so let's, what, what are your goals? I always feel like I'm at a car dealership and they're saying, What's your, what's your, what can your payment be, right? And there's something about, I like going in and saying, um, we're going to do 15% of what you got, right? And, and then we're going to talk about where would you like to be and where's the, how can we fill that gap? But there's something that just feels oogie when somebody starts with, how much can I get you for versus, yeah. hey, let, yeah. me, let me teach you how this whole process works. Exactly. That's good. I like that. Terry's in Tri-Cities, Washington. Hi, Terry. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I, I want to know if I should start paying down my home. I'm debt free except for my mortgage. And, um, but the, the glitch is my house is a manufactured home, Mm -hmm. but it's in a wonderful neighborhood in a great location on a cul-de-sac without any backyard neighbors. And I, I really wanted to get into a stick home, and I thought about it multiple times, but I thought, gosh, I'd end up paying two to four hundred dollars more a month on that. And right now I have seven to eight thousand dollars in emergency fund and um, you know, I'm, I make about sixty thousand a year, so I'm but and my and I pay for my house by sometimes sometimes mid- the answer to a financial question is very easy. If you pan uh-huh. if you pan out a little bit and say, fifteen years from today, what is this going to end me with? And so, mm-hmm. if you stay in this home fifteen years from today, you're going to have a mobile home that is worth almost nothing, because they will fully mm-hmm. go down in value. Agreed? Yeah. Yeah, that's not I good. Agree. That's not good. Um, and fifteen years from today, if you pay a little more for a stick built home, you're going to have something that's gone up three or four x in value. Mm-hmm. So one well, is destroying one is destroying 000. wealth and one is building wealth. Uh huh. And the comps on my house are now two hundred forty five thousand five years later. So I thought, well, maybe I should take advantage of that. Yep. Just because it's not your not house. It's not your house. It's your lot. More. Right. Well, yeah. The dirt is what's valuable. Yeah. It is not the mobile home. Right. One hundred percent of mobile homes go down in value. Uh huh. I'm going to inherit my mom's house, hopefully later than sooner. But uh, and and I'm 61 right now, so that was my other. Well, thought. If you want well, to, if you want to sit on that until now, that I, happens, that's okay. But you've got you. Yeah. You know, every day you own a mobile home, it goes down in value. Mm-hmm. That's what you have to so, think about. So don't put more money into my mortgage is about 840 a month. It doesn't matter. So. If you want to pay it off, that's okay. It's still going to go down in value. Right. Nothing okay. wrong with getting rid of the debt on it, but it's still going to go down in value. Matter of fact, I probably would get it paid off, make it easier to sell. You sell the lot and the mobile home together, and you know if you don't have a, a lien against it, it'll probably make the whole process easier. So that's not a bad thing, but don't hold this thing for 10 years. It's going down in value. Cliff and I joined Christian Healthcare Ministries because we really like the concept of uh, Christians sharing each other's burdens. And we really experienced that firsthand when Cliff was diagnosed with heart disease. It was just such a relief to know that financial burden was going to be taken care of. CHM is the original and longest serving health cost sharing ministry. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org backslash budget.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. About 40 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits in 2020. Congress passed a new COVID relief plan that changed the unemployment tax laws. If you took unemployment... Your first 10200 of unemployment benefits are tax-free from federal taxes. Don't claim them as income. However, there's a couple of cases where your unemployment will be taxed. If you went on during the year to make over 150000 and took unemployment at any point, you'll be taxed on all of it. Or if you receive more than 10200 in unemployment benefits, you'll have to pay taxes on the amount over that couple of cases so check that out if you want to make sure you're filing the right taxes the right way we've got the help you need do them online with ramsey smart tax software very inexpensive just a few dollars it's really easy if you've got an uncomplicated return if you do have a complicated situation get with a pro either way we can help you out text tax to 33789 text tax to 33789 Nine. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Always use the promo code, the magic word, Ramsey. All right, today's question comes from Jessica in Washington State. Jessica writes, I'm a full-time mom with three children. My husband's job allows no time for him to finish, or allows no time for him to give me a break. I'm one class away from a master's degree, and I can't even find time to finish. We cannot afford childcare. How can I find fulfillment and avoid becoming bitter? This sounds like a multi. There's a lot in this question, Dave. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been through seasons where obviously my wife's. And I both had graduate degrees. We had a young kid and we were trying to finish those and race and get done. And there was times we had to trade certain things for childcare. We had to get really creative with having somebody come over and help out or folks from where we worked or folks from school, um, folks from church. But when we had to figure it out, we figured it out. And unless somebody's out, they may be out on an island here. So I don't want to doubt Jessica has gone to what she can gone to the ends to figure it out but it sounds like she's got a challenge with her husband's job which below that is she's got a challenge with her husband that's what i heard yeah um because listen i I, we've been through seasons here when i started this business i I was working 16 hours a day right sharon will tell you she was like a single mom and uh and when i think about that situation if we had sat down with three kids and she's at home full time and i'm gone all the time I mean, I was teaching financial peace. I'm on the radio. I'm traveling. I'm speaking. I'm, you know, launching books. I mean, it was about a two-year period of time that I was leave before dark and come home after dark. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just, yeah, you know, I was working to get a business off the ground. And we were in agreement on that. Uh, she was not embittered by that. But if in that setting, as hard as I was turning it on, if she had said, I'm one class from a master's degree, mm-hmm. this is pissing me off. Mm-hmm. I want to finish it. We would have figured, figured that out, out a right? way to adjust old Dave's That's right. uh, schedule mm-hmm. uh, because I love my wife. And, and that is a, I mean, if you want to go to back to school for four years, that's a different equation. You're one class. And that's why something else. And is, you can't, smell you right. can't yeah. he can't figure out a way to adjust his job on that ever mm-hmm. in the foreseeable future. I call BS. I, I call – well, and the other side of it is how can you find fulfillment and avoid becoming bitter? You can't be fulfilled if you're in a one-sided relationship where somebody is not willing to sit down and, and have this conversation with you. Well, I'm not sure their master's degree makes you fulfilled. I'm not sure even no, getting a master's saying, degree it, and going into a career is going to make you fulfilled. It's the relationship issue here. But this is um, – uh, it's not, I, I don't know if I, I, I'll just take fulfillment out of it. I just be bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Bubba, figure this out, yeah. man. That's uh that's a husband problem. That's, that's what old Dave's reading into that. I'm not sure. It will. And it, yeah, just, just cause it's, do you find this, that people like to blame the job and not the, the employer employee? There's been seasons where I think it was easier for, me to get frustrated with my wife's employer or her to get frustrated with my wife's employer with my employer than to sit down and say 
hey, John, you're choosing work over us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, if you, because here's the thing. Um, if he is in a good career, <laughs> in a positive situation, he's getting a ton of attaboys and affirmations. And he wants to stay there and get more of those mm-hmm. instead of come home. With somebody who's bitter and unfulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And exhausted from watching three kids all day. But yeah, but I mean, yeah, he's like a hero there. And when he comes home, he's a dog. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not blaming her either. I'm just saying, uh, or, you know, he's just self-centered jerk. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. What I can tell you is bitterness is the 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 paved road to resentment and you don't come back from resentment. And yeah. so this couple needs to throw a flag, turn all the lights on in the house and say, mm-hmm. we got to stop this right now. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I, I mean, it might be, cause here's the thing too. Maybe there's, he's in a situation where for the next 12 months, he's going to have to do this. And it's all seasonal, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but when it's, this all feels like it's fatalistic, it's forever. Right. And uh, it, and that's what our that's what it's setting our both of our signals off. Yeah. We got flares going off all around our brains right now. But the uh, um, but if you go well for the next twelve months, he's going to have to turn it on. But then he'll be able to take my class. Mm-hmm. Then you can not be better because you can see your your chance of finishing this up. And that's a reasonable ask. But that's a couple coming together like a budget. Right. And saying it's going to take us this much a month yeah. to pay this off in this. But return. there's an end to it. That's right. Because, you know, but but if this is like for the next 10 years, it's just his job. I just have to put up with it. Mm-hmm. That's that's so fatalistic. Right. That's just that's the wrong way to look at it. Mm-hmm. There's because nothing is that solid. Right. Nothing stays in place that long. Mm-hmm. Andrea is with us in Grand Junction, Colorado. Hey, Andrea, how are you? Good. How are you? Great. How can we help? So I have a question about um, a home that my husband and I bought last July. Um, the home was really old, and we planned to remodel it. And we, before we bought it, we got people in to let us know about how much we were looking at as far as with everything we wanted to do. Um, we've gone through phase one, phase two of our remodel. And now we're looking at phase three, which is a master suite addition. And from last summer to right now, what it cost to do that that addition, we went from about forty thousand dollar addition to now it's looking about sixty five to seventy. Mm-hmm. Uh, my did question you, did you is: change you, the plan? We did not change the plan. It seems like I don't know if it's just in lumber, the small lumber market prices that we are, are in. way up. Lumber prices are lumber and steel. Yeah, but lumber um, and steel us. both. Have you got steel in the addition? In a residential so, add-on for a bedroom? So it would be digging out a, a basement. So that went up substantially. And then the lumber. No, um, digging out the basement. And I don't did, know they, what Digging it, out the basement did not go up. If you got steel I-beams across the basement to put the dadgum bedroom on top of, that went up. Right. That portion went up. It seems like the lumber went up yes. and then we did a metal roof and that also went up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we're, you know, to finish that, that part of it out. Yeah. So my question I w- is, I would put this project on hold. We have two bedrooms. Would you? Okay. Yeah. Cause okay. this is, this is going to even out because the lumber factories and the steel factories, both, I don't know if they're going to come down dramatically, but they are just, there's just this tremendous shortage because they weren't operating during COVID and, and everybody was still ordering lumber. And so there's this right. this drastic shortage. And that's one of the things that's driving the prices up. I don't know that they'll come back down dramatically, but they're, uh, I mean, nuts. The, they went up They went up 30% in some cases, lumber packages. Do but I had, I had somebody come quote me on some new windows a few weeks ago. Then I got a text yesterday that said, hey, we just went up again. I'll hold your price. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I... I you know, it might be that this addition is now unrealistic. That's my point. But um, I would sit on it a little bit. Let, let some of this go by if I were you. This is the Ramsey Shadow.
lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Aaron is with us. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Good. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve, sir. Where do you live? I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Cool. Welcome to Nashville. And all the way down here to do a debt-free scream. Yes, sir. How much did you pay off, sir? I paid off $19,000. Good for you. And how long did this take? It took six months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, 32000 Wow. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a graduate student researcher at the university. Okay. Yep. What are you studying? What are you researching? Uh, mechanical engineering. Outstanding. Good yep. for you. So how do you do 19000 in six months if you only make thirty two? How'd that work? Just cutting to You didn't to make 19000 in six months. Uh, no, well, I I was a really good saver back in back in school, so whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. So go. How much did you pull from savings? Uh, like, I had like between like five and six thousand ah, dollars. So I okay. was pr- I was pretty good at saving beforehand. Uh, good for you. Yeah, but it was more so uh, just trying to get that into place. So what uh, what fired you up? What made you decide uh, six months ago you're going to get after it? Um, so it was uh, it was in March whenever uh, the pandemic was uh, starting and. Um, and uh uh like you know the whole world was like on fire like yeah. to- toilet paper was flying off the shelves yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like it seemed like the world was uh coming to the end and then they were talking about uh forbearance uh with student loans mm-hmm. and i realized that like i had no idea how much like i owed and i was like okay well i need to figure out how to get on a budget and stuff so i went on youtube figured out how to make a budget like it was like some college professor on youtube teaching me how to make a budget and then the next day uh, I guess because I looked up budget, uh, you came up and you were uh, and you were uh, uh, you're, you're getting fired up over somebody trying to uh, finance a TV at Best Buy, and I <laughs> and I and I and I found that hilarious. But like I found there was like a lot of merit to what you were saying, and uh, bought your book, read it at night, and uh, that's all it took. I oh love how gosh. a graduate student doing research in mechanical engineering heard a professor and then heard Dave and so thought. I'm going to go with Dave. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, you don't get good rants out of college <laughs> professors like that. You, yeah. They just they don't come off it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well done, sir. How does it feel now that you're free? Uh, liberating. <laughs> so what did you get out of the total money makeover when you read it all in one night that, that, uh, that you actually did? So when somebody says, okay, well, if I read that book, what am I going to learn that's going to help me get out of debt? What did you do? It, it was really like a, a mental shift. Like it wasn't like, a, it like a, you know, like like you said, if you were doing like, uh, if you were doing math, uh, like you wouldn't be in debt in the first place. Mm-hmm. So it's really the mental shift that like, you know, you're never going to borrow money again and you're going to be on a written plan from now on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well done. So I've, I've worked exclusively with graduate students i've been a graduate professor myself i've 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 met a number of students in your situation and it's hard to exist sometimes on on those on those grad student stipends yeah yeah how did you manage to do that and be so focused on both your studies and paying off your debt it it was really like i mean like i mean like i said it was like cutting everything to the bone like it was like uh like moving back home like only buying food like that was a the great value brand uh like cutting my own hair like i mean like it was like i wasn't gonna say anything but you, you did a good job man yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, no, yeah you, you should see whenever i first did it i did not, <laughs> did not look good at all <laughs> but uh yeah no it, it like it, it really was like just cutting everything to the bone but like by doing that and not spending like any money at all like going out to eat or going out with friends it really made me focus on my studies too, like and yeah. focus on my work. So yeah. like my work and like my focus was, I, I, like all my work was like really improved by doing the program. I'm usually in awe of the folks on the debt-free stage, just personally. Mm. I, you're a superstar, my friend. Amen. Amen. What you have pulled off, and it's you know nineteen thousand dollars um, making thirty-two making in 32 six months with a, six thousand out of savings. That's very impressive. Well, being a student and an employee of the university too, that's just extraordinary. I'm proud of you, man. Very Thank well you. done. Who were your biggest cheerleaders? Uh, mom and mom and dad. They okay. were they were the biggest tre- cheerleaders. They were uh, very skeptical at first. Uh, like you know, whatever I was telling them that uh, there's a bald man on the radio in Tennessee giving financial advice. <laughs> they, they 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 probably thought, he cuts his own hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait till you call your parents and tell them you're gonna go work for that bald man. That's a yeah, whole other conversation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> man, I'm proud of you, Aaron. 
Well done. Very well done, Aaron. I'm proud of you too, sir. It's very impressive what you pulled off. And it, it sets you up to do so many other things later because it builds a level of confidence, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, now I could go anywhere. Like, you know, mm -hmm. sky's the limit. Like, oh, where I can, like, practice engineering. Like, so what is your, so engineering is your future career? Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How, how far out before you start that? Uh, well, I mean, like, I may be going on for a PhD here. We'll see. But for right now, it's just a master's. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like going into the workforce, maybe like, you know, another three or four years, but okay. like, you know. So you're going to go and do engineering or you're going to teach it? Um, haven't really decided that yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the yeah. cool thing is you can do whatever you want because you don't owe anybody any money. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Gives you a lot of wiggle room, man. Well mm -hmm. done. Very well done. All right. Aaron from the Pittsburgh area. $19,000 paid off in six months, making 32000 a year. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free. Yeah. Dave, the, the average listener will not know how hard what he did actually was. He swam upstream in a culture with no water. I don't know how – I'm just in awe of what he pulled off while also going to school. I mean, he literally had to cut everything. I'm moving back home with my parents. I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to cut my own hair. That's a guy that said, I'm going to make the change now. Mm -hmm. And um, what he did was really impressive. Well, because no one around him. No one no. is doing that. And the math didn't work, right? It yeah. was, if he had come to me, I would have said, hey, man, why don't you wait till after school? And he said, nope, I'm going to do it now. Yeah. And went to all, like, you know, all the great links to go to to get this thing done, man. It's so impressive. It is. Um, I remember when I was a kid uh, going to a sales conference with my parents, and, and the guy was a positive thinking guy, mm -hmm. you know. And um, at first, I was really, really enamored with that. And then I went through a period of time in my 20s where um, I'm like, you cannot positive think your way into everything. I can't grow hair just on my head just because I'm positive think. I'm not going to uh, add a foot to my stature and be able to play in the NBA as a result, of, you know, just because of positive think. So you can't positive think your way into everything. And so I kind of just set all that stuff aside and turn it off. But the more I do this in this chair over the last 25 years, the more I realize that belief mm -hmm. that you can do it is more important. That's called hope. Mm -hmm. Belief that you can do it is called hope is more important than the math. Mm -hmm. It's that idea that, yeah, I, no matter what, I'm going to keep moving forward. Well, I mean, because I'm having to ask him because the math didn't work. Right. I mean, he, he did not make 19000 in six months. How do you pay off 19000 You couldn't do it. It's mathematically impossible. Well, oh, by he the way, took in, savings out. In my undergrad, I saved some money. Yeah. In my first year in grad school, I saved some money. Yeah, right. so I had this $6,000, and that mm -hmm. changes the equation. And then he lived on literally beans and rice, rice and beans. It's very, very impressive. But all of that stems from I'm going to do extreme things because I believe, I hope, mm -hmm. I have hope that, I believe that, the result of planting corn is that corn is going to grow. Mm -hmm. I believe the result of this is I can see the math that I'm going to be out in six months, seven months, five months, whatever it is. So I'm going to walk five miles a day to get water for that corn. I'm going to yeah. keep watering it. I'm going to keep watering it. People are going to say I'm crazy. Because I believe. I'm going to be tired. But if you don't believe, right. then you start going, well, you know, people like me can't get ahead. And let, let America lis listen directly from an engineering graduate student. It's not about the math. It's about the psychology. It's about the heart. Isn't that interesting? Right? He can do the math. Talk about a guy that can do the math. But Woo. it's just like, man, I had to get my heart right. This is The Ramsey Show.
scripture of the day, Proverbs 9, 9, instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. George Patton said, accept the challenges so you can feel the exhilaration of victory. Amen. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Max is, I'm sorry, Mitchell is with us in Chattanooga. Hi, Mitchell. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey, John. Hey, Dave. Um, Quick question. I'm in the tail end of baby step two, and... I have a car lease or a fleece, as you would put it, and the turn-in is in in June. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if I should pause where I'm at on the baby steps. I have, obviously, baby step one done, but should I pause baby step two to stack cash toward buying a new or a a vehicle after I turn it in and cover any expenses that I would have at the end of that fleece? Yes. To buy a $2,000 or $3,000 car to have them try to sell me this thing at a finance? Yes. Okay. You're okay. they're right on. That's a really brilliant idea. You properly looked into the future and avoided an emergency that really shouldn't have been an emergency because you thought about it six months ahead of time, five months ahead of time. You're going to be able to do this. Well done. Yes, that's exactly what you should do. Right on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There is a principle there that Christmas should not be an emergency. They don't move it. Right. It doesn't surprise anybody. This lease is coming up. Mm-hmm. That, you know, you're in the fall, you're going to go to school. These are not new pieces of information. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, develop some kind of a game plan. And that's what he was doing, shuffling, you know, hide, moving the shell around, hiding the pee till we find a game plan to figure this out. So I don't know how I'm going to get a car. I can't be walking. I can't turn this thing in. I don't want to finance this thing. I don't want to keep it. It needs to go away. And how am I going to do that? I can't say, oh, so I'm going to stop beautifully done good critical thinking but people don't look out past freaking friday i was gonna say i i I have not read a book on it and i could probably call a buddy of mine that's got some theory on it dave but you've been doing this for a long time what what is this where there is no vision the people perish when you don't look out past friday everything yeah yeah it's the car lease it's christmas it's you're gonna die have a will it's that your kid's gonna go to some sort of secondary education i mean it's everything. One definition of maturity, though, is just the ability to delay pleasure, the ability to look into the future and go, "I this should not be a surprise. No. The tires wearing out on your car are a 100% probability that's going to occur. An oil change coming up is a yeah. for sure going to happen. It's a 100% probability. Hmm. And so you shouldn't need, oh, the tires suddenly went out on my car. <laughs> I mean, you, you wouldn't believe the number of times I had somebody that the tires suddenly went out on their car, so they traded cars. <laughs> <laughs> Max is with us in Seattle. Hey, Max, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Uh, yes, hi, Dave. Hey, John. So uh, I'm 17. I'm a high school senior right now. <clears throat> and so I'll be a freshman at my state school as a business finance major. And I'll be living with my parents during this time. And so I have a guaranteed full ride for all four years. And uh, this year after tuition and fees, I'll have about ten grand left over scholarships for the first year. And so my question is, what should I do with this leftover money? Should I save it for after college? Should I invest it or uh, give away part of it? That's my question. Put it in a savings account to keep going to school with. That's right, man. You may want to get an opportunity to study abroad. You may get an opportunity to do an internship. You got to something else pay, may fall through, knows. and you may need this money. Right. You, it's one hundred percent to be invested in Max's education. Nothing okay. else. And I can tell if you're if you're a business finance major who's got a full ride, that means you're a person who thinks ahead, just like we were just talking about. Don't overthink this. Just put it in a savings account and have it there available for you when you need it because you're going to need it. Here's the math for you, Max. You completing the degree and completing it debt-free is much more valuable, exponentially more mathematically, financially uh, valuable than, than you can make on a mutual fund. Okay, you put ten thousand dollars in a mutual fund, you make a thousand bucks. Max is worth a lot more than a thousand bucks because Max is a freaking bright student. 
and he's got a degree not in underwater basket weaving coming up or left-handed puppetry. <laughs> he's got a degree that's very usable in the marketplace. So you finish this degree, you finish it on time because you keep looking ahead and you make sure you take the freaking classes necessary to graduate on time. It's amazing. It's a whole nother story. And, uh, and you keep this money set there. Now, let's say you go all the way through and you never need the money and the money's still sitting there. Well, then it's there to help you start your new job with a new apartment in the new city, maybe buy a little bit of a better car or something after you graduate. But you are the secret sauce in this equation. You are worth more finishing this degree than any mutual fund will ever pay you. I'm ashamed to say this, Dave, because I had never done the lost sunk cost math here. But I was sitting with a group of folks in a think tank working through the, the how do we lower the cost of higher education? And there's a million different options on the table. And one of them was get out early because you don't do the math, not only on the cost of this education, but on the lost costs of unearned wages. And I went to the University of Tennessee with my oldest daughter, the first one to go to college. I'm sitting in the freaking freshman orientation and they go, well, 57% or 52% or whatever it is, graduation rate. And uh, of the ones that graduate, only 25% do it in four years. Oh, yeah. That's, that 50% is on a six-year graduation rate, right? And so, yeah. And so I reach over on her notes and wrote in big letters, have a freaking plan. <laughs> I mean, when I was in school, they gave us a catalog. I'm sure it's on digital now. But you look and you go, these are the classes I need to take, and they are all offered during the four-year period. Right. You can't schedule that. How do you qualify for a college degree? <laughs> but, Dave, I don't want to get so up. So lame. I don't want to get up before 11 a.m. And yeah, eight o'clock classes bother me because my beer pong gets interrupted at 11 p.m. the night before. All right, you give me I a hard get to time, the gym here, man. By 4 p.m. So I don't want to take any afternoon. Don't get yeah. me started because you know. By the way, that extra year costs money. That's what I'm saying. You it, can take a full load and not even a full load, but it, and graduate in four years. But it costs. On all, say it I mean, on what? 100 percent of the degree fields. It costs 25 grand, let's say, and that's on the low end. But if you were gonna go make 45 grand as at a job. It costs you that too because you're not working, right? There's a there's a, a cost on top of that. That's true, and that's where when I had thought, oh my gosh, it's this it's the tuition plus the fact that this five year plan. I mean, I'm sorry if you graduate in five years, you can be pissed at me if you want, but I every all three of my children graduated in four years because I said 100 percent of the money stops at the four year mark mm -hmm. and I'm gonna kick your little college butt. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. Well especially just now have a plan. You could go to high school now and do dual credit courses. You can there's so many options you can take. You can get done with five years with a master's degree now. So I worked forty to sixty hours a week when I was in school. Yeah. And graduated in four years. Yeah. So cry me a freaking river. Get done. Seriously. Get her done. You know why I graduated in four years? Because I didn't have the money to keep going. I didn't want to keep going. I wanted to get out and make money. Right. I, you know, it's like I was so broke I couldn't breathe getting through. I didn't want to live that life anymore. It was not a, it was, it wasn't party central. No, it was not living on my daddy's frat and my daddy's frat and my daddy's frat paying the bill. It's not yeah. it's unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. So you got you got to go to you know, school. The, so get higher out. education, you know, you can blame these universities if you want, or you can blame your lazy butt for not following the dadgum syllabus. Well, nowadays you can take 30, 60 hours in high school for free. Yeah. A community college or, for free. Right. And then roll in and be out in 18 months or 24 months if you want to. And yeah. then hit the workforce and get ready to rock So and roll. you get a four-year degree effectively in two years. The number of students coming in with 30 to 60 hours, it was, it was impacting – the college bottom line because kids were taking the classes in their high schools AP for free. AP classes. That's right. AP well, just dual credit courses. Yeah. Oh, they're dual credit AP and, and You they, can figure and out. And or clap out, but right? But it goes all the way back to what we were talking a minute ago. Just the number of parents I would talk to over the years, good people that would just suddenly went, oh, my kid's a senior. Well, they got to go to college next year. Yeah. Like, they, like it's a surprise. Like they just showed up. That's right. Christmas is in December. <laughs> that's, that's such a great line. Hey, don't move it. Christmas is in December. Good show, John. Good job, James Childs, Kelly in the booth. Well done. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, 
it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free scream live on the show, make sure you visit DaveRamsey.com show and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell your story. 